Today, I am going to tell you exactly how to start a digital planner store online. Now, this week during the Planner Pixies membership, we are doing a five-day challenge on how to create a digital product idea. Just how to come up with your first idea, the one that really fits with you, the one that totally resonates and like makes you wanna jump out of bed every morning and like get going. So if you are like me, I love paper planners, I love paper notebooks, I love getting card decks, I love paper and pens and stickers and all of that stuff. However, as a business owner, I am very risk adverse and I maybe don't want to sink a lot of money into starting a physical planner stationary type of business. And that is completely okay if you feel the same way. I think an alternative idea is starting a digital planner store, which is not only just as lucrative, but might be a better option, especially if you are someone who loves the iPad, really embraces minimalism, but still loves the idea of planners. You can create digital planner stickers, you can create digital uh, notebooks, all of the things that you can create offline, you can create online for digital as well. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that today. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa from Pretty Fabulous and I help online businesses to create beautiful digital downloads using Adobe InDesign. So if this sounds like you or something you might be interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. I post new videos every Tuesday. All right, so if you would like to start a digital planner store, the first thing you need to do is one, get some research. Just get familiar with them, download, try some out, see how they do customer service, how they help with their customers and explaining how to actually use their products and if they have good efforts FAQs and what kind of mock-ups they put out there. So kind of find a couple different competitors that are already doing what you want to do and see if there is something in there that you would consider a best practice that you want to make note of. So for example, you should have someone who has a best practice in terms of style and design. So do you want very modern looking planners? Do you want more of a vintage look? Would you like something that's bright and colorful? Or would you like something very feminine and maybe just a Barbie doll kind of store where everything is pink and white. Doesn't matter what it is, make sure that you kind of have a picture in your mind of the look and feel that you want your shop to have and also the emotions that it evokes. Like someone should come there and be like, this is the best shop ever. I've been looking for a vintage looking digital planner, even though I do love using an iPad. I like that old timey feel and I like the vintage colors and characters and I like a weathered kind of paper look, which you can create as well as a faux paper inside of your planner. So that is step number one is research. Step number two is for you to go ahead and create a layout. So when I say layout, I don't mean just start designing. I mean like the anatomy of a planner. So I have another video coming out next week where we're going to talk about how to actually plan out the different pages. Do you need a goals page? Do you want a monthly goal setting page? Do you need a two page monthly spread? Do you want a one page monthly spread? Do you want a weekly spread inside of there too? And because it's digital, you can kind of do anything you want. You can create your planner in anything you want. I mean, I love Adobe InDesign, but you can create them in Canva. I've seen people create them in Keynote or in uh, that new Affinity Publisher. So, you know, anything. I am like agnostic when it comes to design platforms. Although I do love it in design, I think you should use whatever works best for you, or you can outsource it to somebody else. Um, so once you've planned out all of your planner pages, the third thing you need to do is you need to think about collections. I say this all the time. And I think what happens is people start making stuff. And I know I did too, especially with my templates. I just started making things and then I didn't really put them into collections. So people like buying things that match, right? Just like your, if you look around your apartment or your house or your style, you probably have like a dress that goes with the earrings and the lipstick and a bracelet and the matching shoes and a matching purse, right? So it works exactly the same way when it comes to planners. People would like to have a couple different planners in a collection. Maybe you have a planner, you have a notebook, you have a day planner, you have a to-do list. All of these different products they're going to buy from you because they all match as well as you can start thinking about matching stickers and then you can start thinking about matching uh quotes to add to those as well, or card decks. There are so many different things you can do as long as you think in terms of collection, right? You could have the lace collection. You could have the rose gold collection. I know rose gold is a little played out. Um, you could have the glitter collection, right? So just think 
ahead of time of like collections that you wanna create to make a more cohesive brand and it's going to sell a little better. The fourth thing that you wanna think about is niche. So your planners, you can create dated planners, you can create undated, you can create specialty, uh, but all of them usually have a niche. So it, like I said, it could be something where color is your niche. Nothing wrong with just having the pink or the violet or the uh, ultra blue or whatever shop. I'm trying, I'm just making up colors, right? <laughs> you could also look at the Pantone color of the year and see if that inspires you as well. So you could do anything based on color. You could do it for a different type of audience. So a lot of people talk about client avatars and maybe one of your avatars is busy moms. You're a busy mom, you know that there are other busy moms and they could just use a little guidance and a little help and with meal planning, with uh, children's activities, with just scheduling their lives and something as simple as laundry, right? Like maybe they could just use some tips from somebody else who's been there. So that could also be your niche. So there's a ton of different areas that you could do for a niche. We talked a lot about this in the Digital Product Idea Challenge. So once you decide that, then you're gonna go ahead and throw your stuff up online. Now, I know Etsy is like the number one go-to and I definitely think that's a great place to do it. You could also sell it yourself in a Shopify store or you could sell it on your website. It is so easy. Um, there are so many different options for selling things and you could also sell it in another showcase. So I sold a lot of my digital planner templates inside of Creative Market. I wouldn't say Creative Market is the best place probably for digital planners, um, but there are other options out there aside from just Etsy for you to sell your digital digital planner on. So having said that, um, now that you have sold it, you're pretty much ready to go. And then the next thing you need to do is just kind of set up a customer service email automation so you can let people know, one, you appreciate the fact that they purchased from you. Two, hey, do you need any help learning how to download your product or use your product? And three, you might want to give them a coupon to go ahead and start buying more planners from you in the future. In fact, you could do, I don't know if anyone ha ever has bought or rented a TV show. I, I think you have to buy them on Apple. But when you buy them, it always says after you buy one or two, it'll say complete the season for X number of dollars. So now that you have thought about doing collections, you can say, hey, why don't you complete the collection for X number of dollars? And most likely, I bet a lot of people will take you up on that sale. All right, so at this point, all you should be doing is focusing on marketing and adding more inventory to your shop. So just a rinse and repeat process. It is super easy. There are no barriers to entry, like none at all. And if you are looking for inventory to get started, there are over 12 planner templates inside of the Pretty Fabulous Designs shop all on their own. So each planner, digital planner template is $97, which I can't do math, but that's about $1,200. Versus if you just join the Planner Pixies membership, you can get all of those planners included as an unlimited download for like one third of the price. All right, I hope everyone's having a fabulous day. And also don't forget if you join Planner Pixies, not only will you get access to all that inventory, but you'll get access to the rest of the Digital Product Idea Challenge. All right, I will talk to everybody later. Bye.